Hi, welcome in and here's a thought. Be careful who you trust. Salt and sugar look the same. Author unknown. <laughs> well, this is a big week, so we're going to start with the sugar. Why not? I mean, first full week of July, and we're taking our sweet six-year-old grandson, Colin, away for two nights to a spot up island just a bit. Now, you've undoubtedly heard about the deadly heat that BC has been under. Fortunately for us here on Vancouver Island, we're now firmly in the upper teens and lower 20s since breaking all records a week ago. Also, fortunately, the smoke from the countless mainland fires is staying on the mainland, but we're just a wind's change away from it affecting our quality, too, of our air and visibility and all of that. So, as in all things, we live day to day and hope for the best, control what we can. If we get to cycle or have windows open, yay! And if not, we stay inside and we stay as safe as we can. But not all dangers come in the window. Some are right in your hand, on your phone, and I'm here to tell you about a call that Rob got the other day. Pass the salt. Here we go. He got a robocall from a 1519 phone number. Cautiously, he answered, and it launched into the recorded spiel, saying that they had detected two suspicious purchases, one for about $400 for eBay, and a gift card in the amount of $3,500. Okay, well, we knew we had made neither of those purchases. Then the recording went on to say we should press one to allow and press two if these were not our purchases. Well, the first thing you wanna do is press two, right? But thankfully, Rob stopped before he hit two and he hung up instead. Right away, we called the bank's 1-800 customer service number on the back of our credit card. We followed the prompts to lost or stolen credit cards and spoke to a real live customer service rep on Canada Day. She was able to confirm that there were no such charges to our credit cards, which of course was a tremendous relief after having had similar but legitimate troubles earlier this year. She told us that the fake phone calls usually cite an eBay charge and a gift card purchase. Hmm. So that was the first red flag. The second is that our call display showed a phone number from Wingham, Ontario, in case anyone cares. Now, our experience shows if there's been a fraudulent charge, a live person from the bank calls. It's not a recording, although if you don't answer, they will leave a message and they ask you about the charges or that you call back. Now, in our experience, again, they never ask you to do anything on the phone, like press one or press two. So there you go. Like I said, danger comes in all shapes and sizes. And in this case, it was just a holiday phone call from a number in our country. Or so they'd have us believe. I mean, who even knows, right? But please share this journal, this vlog, this message, if you would, with your parents or friends so they're aware that this is happening. Oh, by the way, it felt really good to let the bank know the phone number of these scam artists. If they can link them, we can hope that somebody's in trouble. <laughs> I will be back with you later on this week, hopefully with sand in my shorts and stories to tell. And that sounds like a country song. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>